Hey, welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. Hey, in uh, this episode, we're going to talk about using cottonseed hulls, which is pretty much what I've switched over to using now, and I'll tell you why. Um, also, I'm going to show you how I use alfalfa mixed in with the straw if for some reason you can't get cottonseed hulls. And uh, I know some people around the country are having some difficulty trying to find them. Uh, this brand right here is Delta Oil Mill because they are used in uh, drilling for oil. I think it maybe it, it lowers the friction of the drills or something, something of that sort. But uh, I can get them in 40 pound bags. You see cotton seed hulls. And uh, I'll show you a little bit right here. So I'm sticking on the end of the bag. As you can see, it's cottony. And I don't know if you can tell too well but there's like little half shells of where the uh, the cotton was attached to the plant and they've picked the cotton and that's what's left so it's a an, agric an agricultural resource that gets to be reused but I'm going to show you how to use those today and uh, some good results I've already had with them all right let's get busy Okay, for those of you that can't find cottonseed hulls, and uh, I might have a future video too on maybe using buckwheat hulls, but I got to find some myself and experiment, but I think that might be a good substitution. Anyway, you get to use alfalfa with your straw as a supplement. Now, I'm using Stan Lee brand alfalfa cubes. I get them over at the tractor supply, and I've stuck with this brand pretty much because I've bought alfalfa in pellets and cubes um, from the same granary I get my wheat and rye. And it always seems to either be uh, just kind of like a, a poor color to it, like it's old, or it's been uh, pelletized so hard and with such a high temperature that it has like a burnt smell to it. And so this stuff seems to be pretty good. See inside the bag, it's hard cubes of alfalfa. Now, how I will use this, you want to fill a five gallon bucket one quarter of the way up with these cubes. And obviously you can see they're so hard that you're not gonna be able to use them right off just throwing them into your pasteurizer, your pasteurization drum. So what we're gonna do is in that five gallon bucket, we're gonna fill it full of hot water and let them soak, but we're going to fill, fill the bucket halfway full of hot water and let it soak about, oh, at least a half hour ahead of time before we uh, put it into the pasteurizer. And after it's soaked, you'll kind of have a, a, a spinach consistency, you'll notice. And when you're loading your straw into the uh, drum, you will just make layers of straw and the alfalfa and I usually make about four or five uh, layers of the alfalfa in it. Just so you know, it gets dispersed evenly. And then once you get it on the table, and uh, you can give it a little bit more of a mixing, and of course, too, when you're packing your logs or other containers, you can uh, mix it with your hand better. And you want to get any clumps of it that you find that's kind of still a little bit cubed up and break that up and try to distribute it as evenly as you can into the straw. Um, if you don't break it up, what will happen is you'll get hot spots which uh, will give a rise to contamination. Also too if you uh, try to increase the amount of alfalfa per uh, batch, um, which you can do and I've used up to a, a half, uh, half a five gallon bucket full of alfalfa cubes. You know pretty much when you soak it it's all the way to the top and uh, that seemed to still work in like in the middle of winter when it's very cold but when it's warm out if you get logs say uh, up into 65 or 70 degrees or warmer than that the alfalfa will kind of give you a runaway with the heat and uh, that heat will bring upon uh, contamination so I always recommend just using a one quarter of a five gallon bucket and that's a safe amount and that will give me about upwards of 15 pounds on the first flush um, per log. So you figure one batch of two logs, 
you're going to talk about 30 pounds and then probably an additional 6 pounds on a second flush. So still over 40 pounds and that's pretty good compared to only about 8 or 9 pounds uh, without the alfalfa. So it's good but like I said before I switched to the cottonseed hulls for uh, some good reasons and here I'll show you why. So check out these monsters. Now these are the results of my king oysters on cottonseed hauls. You can see they are gargantuan compared to uh, the ones coming off these uh, alfalfa, alfalfa supplemented straw logs. That's the second flush coming off those, that's why those are actually bigger. But you can take a look at this cluster over here. It's really huge. And the one below it still has uh, probably four or five days. Because it's still cold out. And over here you can see I have my next batch I did. And they're just now starting to come out the holes. Now it does seem to take about two extra weeks, maybe even more, for. Uh, before the uh, mushrooms start to fruit on the cottonseed hull compared to the alfalfa and straw. Most likely just because the cottonseed hulls have a denser amount of nutrition, hence the larger fruits. You can see also too that there's quite a bit of these uh, mushrooms that grow and go nowhere because they're trapped underneath the plastic. I don't know if you could tell but it's actually already starting to eat those away and turn them back into food for the uh, <clears throat> for everything on the outside. There's actually a term for that. I can't remember where it reuses the old mushroom mycelium. It'll actually turn flat and you'll still have the shape of the small mushroom underneath the plastic. One thing you don't want to do is cut these open and to and try to let those grow back while it's fruiting because usually that you'll end up with a uh, fruit with bacteria on it. At least that's my experience. So, it's nice and big. I'm going to cut this big cluster off and weigh it. Probably take a picture of it. I guess probably the, one, of the, one of the largest clusters I've ever done. I'm ready to chop down the second log off the same batch. You can see now that it's been about four or five days later and the mushrooms have gotten huge again. Not any really huge clusters like that last one but still uh, quite a bit. C2 usually usually you'll find that most of the mushrooms grow on one side of the log and the ends. You see this one right here is a monster. It's probably about a half pound by itself at least. And again, these ones back here are the same four or five days later. You can see they're uh, coming out strong again on the uh, ends for some reason. I'm not really sure why that's a trend. And again, you can see uh, the one that I chopped all the mushrooms off a few days ago that, as I said, all the uh, little mushrooms that are inside are getting kind of... Uh, sucked down into nothing and turned back into the log. Now they will go bad after a while. That's why you can only uh, get uh, two, three flushes out of a log. Although, I think I said before, I'm going to hope to try to get about three or four flushes with these just because the uh, uh, cottonseed hulls has a higher amount of nutrition. So it should be able to sustain uh, extra flushes without going bad and producing mold. But we'll see. Off this log I picked 15 and a half pounds with no additional supplements. Which, and the uh, these straw logs of the alfalfa I've been picking maximum of about 14 pounds off them. So you can see with no alfalfa it's an extra pound and a half 
per log. And less work because you don't have to chop up the hauls. Um, the amount of hauls I use for me costs about $10, which is about three quarters of a big 40 pound sack. I'm pretty sure it's 40 pounds. I've heard in the Midwest though, or uh, in areas where it's mining, you can buy them in 100 pound gunny sacks for really cheap. So that's something to think about. But at the additional cost of $10 a batch of hulls versus uh, about $3 for a whole bale for a batch of straw, it's definitely worth it for the uh, amount of mushroom you get, the size and quality of the mushrooms because not only are these mushrooms bigger, but because so, they uh, will last longer in the fridge because the larger the mushroom, the more uh, tissue is there to not dry out. Um, so yeah, it's a very good deal, I think. Um, I'm probably actually gonna do uh, one or two more batches of the straw just because I have a lot of it still in my, uh, sitting in my barn and I gotta use up. But I'm gonna definitely switch to doing nothing but the cottonseed hauls. And, you know, I might experiment to see um, adding alfalfa to these, whether it'll work or not, because already the moisture content's pretty high. And usually when you have the high moisture with the alfalfa, with the high nutrition, it's not a good mix and you'll lead to contamination. But, you know, I can always experiment, give it a try. I think as long as I probably am able to keep the temperature down, um, into the 60s down here in the middle of the summer, I won't have any problems maybe adding some alpha or something, but that'll be a video for another time, you know? These other king oysters on cottonseed hulls produced even better results. You can see this very large cluster here that was bigger than the other one, and that one log produced over 20 pounds the first flush.